break. And how appropriate this is reflected on this day we celebrate Children's Day. This past Tuesday, we celebrated 30 of our young people who received the sacrament of confirmation. So that, that oil still glowing for that chrism. And it'll be exciting to see what these 30 will go on to do with the gifts that were given to them by the Holy Spirit. And just yesterday, I celebrated the sacrament of baptism, and immediately after this Mass, there'll be another baptism. And I can't help but think as uh, when it comes to the sacrament of baptism, one of the last parts of the ritual is the blessing of mother and child, father and child, you know, then the concluding prayer, and it is now let us welcome into, you know, our church's newest member, you know, insert the name there. But in that moment, I can't help but think about the Lion King. You know what I'm talking about? There's that part where we're freaky, you know, hands, you know, puts up uh, Simba, and Simba sees everything. So in that moment, we as a church, we celebrate just the, uh, the newest saint, the newest uh, person in our faith for the sacrament of baptism. And as I think about, you know, the, the, that image of the Lion King, I think that what that movie can teach us is about relationship, identity, and mission. And it's something that we reflect on today on Good Shepherd Sunday, relationship, identity, and mission. If you look back and think about the movie or the live action play or the cartoon, The Lion King, remember that Simba, having been coming to the world, uh, spends time with his father, Mufasa. And there's a scene where he looks over all the pride lands and he says, one day this will be yours. So in a sense, Simba is getting to have a relationship with his father and learning his identity. Because as he learns and looks out, his, his mission one day will be to go out into this kingdom that will be his. He starts to discover after the death of his father, he gets a little lost. He begins to suffer. We hear the suffering. He doesn't see any joy in the suffering. So as he suffers, some people try to confuse him about what his identity is, like his uncle Scar. But he made good friends along the way in Timon and Pumbaa, who reminded him, reminded him of who he is, his relationship with the father, his identity as a beloved uh, son of him, so that he would one day fulfill his mission as king. Likewise, you and I, we have a relationship with our heavenly father, the good shepherd. We uh, have, he's so good to us, even though sometimes we might go astray, but he's always there to welcome us back in through the sheep gate. And as we continue to maintain our relationship with our Heavenly Father, we rediscover our identity, that we as baptized and soon confirmed Christians, that, um, that we have a beloved God, that we have value and worth. But sometimes along the way, there's wounds of sin and division, and other people in the world try to tell us who we are and to discourage us. But we are reminded through this Paschal candle that when Christ conquers sin and death, that has won over for us the inheritance one day that we get to go to the heavenly kingdom. So we are reminded that we need to encourage one another of who we are as beloved sons and daughters of our heavenly father and the relationship we have him so that we can now go forth too on our mission. Our mission to the day that the Lord calls us to the heavenly kingdom is to remind people to go and make disciples of all nations, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to go announce the good news that the tomb is empty, that we have a Lord that delivers and fulfills his promise, that we become his hands and feet in our homes, in the community, and abroad. So also today as we celebrate in a way our relationship with our Heavenly Father, our identity as beloved sons and daughters, and our mission, it is also the world day for vocations. So that we know that we're all in the single life until we answer the call to universal holiness by either remaining single or answering the call to married life, religious life, or priesthood. So in a way, I just ask that during your communion time or sometime with your prayer, in a certain way, thank your parents for the gift of life. Also in a special way, you'll just thank the priest or deacon, whoever baptized you, whoever officiated your marriage, uh, was there at the passing of a loved one into eternal life. And also, as we celebrate this World Day for Vocations, not only do we uh, pray, you know, for priests, uh, we continue, we need new vocations also. I want you to know here at St. Matthew, uh, beginning a couple of months ago, there's been a priesthood 101 and religious 101. 
trying to help college students discern, answering the call and knowing if the priesthood religious life is for them or not. I invite you to pray with me, and over the next couple of weeks, what are ways that you and I here at St. Matthew can help encourage and promote vocations? Not only to the married life, but also priests and religious. Uh, we're blessed for this family has produced, our parish family here has produced people that have answered a call to the priesthood. We're thankful for Bob Brennan that your son was able to answer the call. And then uh, we also have um, Gerardo family, not only a deacon, but also brother as priest. So a lot of people are, are trying to distract in the world answering the call or telling the call, but I invite us to continue to be open and what are ways that we can promote and help one another listen to the call for our young people, whether it's to married life, priesthood, or the diaconate life. But as we continue with this liturgy, I just encourage you to be of good cheer this week as we remember our relationship with the Father, our identity as beloved sons and daughters, and as we go forth the Eucharist sent on mission to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen.